Okay, so up next is the co-main event. Uh, we're going to bring in the athletes for the Bellator Champions Series uh, uh, co-main event. So we've got Irish prospect Paul Hughes. Of course, lots of people have been talking about him. Very excited that he's uh, that he's taken a step forward in his career and that he's uh, still fighting on home soil, at least this time around. And his opponent, tough, well-known veteran of Bellator, Bobby, uh, Bobby King. Um, so Paul Hughes, one of the most highly anticipated prospects in Irish mixed martial arts. Um, set to make his Bellator de uh, debut in Dublin, which is uh, very exciting against uh, uh, Bobby King. Um, King's eager to get back in the wing column while Hughes is looking to make a statement in Bellator and for Irish mixed martial arts. So uh, with no further ado, welcome both of you. Now, the way this is going to work, I'm going to ask a question to each of you, and then I'm going to hand it over to Gabby to field the questions from the media. Uh, so first of all, to, to Paul Hughes, um, does this feel like a step forward in your career? Does this feel like a like a like a, a new lease of life and a new target, something to aim for? Absolutely, one hundred percent. I mean, this fight's going to be in the three arena. You know, that's a one one of the best venue, if not the best venue in Ireland, one of the best in the UK. So, I mean, like, it's awesome. You know, definitely a step forward. Uh, and for Bobby King, obviously, you know, a well known face in Bellator. You've been in some fantastic fights over the years. What what's it going to be like for you to come into enemy territory and fight someone like Paul Hughes um, on his home soil? Yeah, man, I'm just excited. Excited for the opportunity. Excited to fight him. Excited to fight in Dublin. Super excited to be there. It's a it's a very special venue. Um, it, no matter who you are, where you're coming from, and who you're fighting, you, you'll be made to feel welcome. It's a it, it's a very special venue, and the crowd are going to be incredible. Right, I'll hand it back over to Gabby for you to field the uh, the, the questions from the media. Mike Pendleton. Thanks, Gabby. First question for Paul. You were obviously the most coveted guy out there for any promotion to sign, but that's your decision to sign with whomever you chose, and that obviously being PFL Bellator. What was it about your meeting with them, about what they presented to you, about what they offered you, the opportunities for, that led you to sign with this company? Look, there was many factors that went into the decision. You, you know, it wasn't purely a monetary thing, which a lot of people think it was. That's absolutely not the case. You know, I'm at the point of my career where I want activity. I want to fight and I want to prove myself now. You know, I've been saying for the last probably 12 months that I am the best in the world. And I truly believe that. I believe that I'm top five up there, regardless of promotions, 155 pounders in the world. And now I get the opportunity to prove that, you know, the PFL promised to keep me active for three more fights this year. And of course, entering the twenty twenty five million dollar uh, season, that that keeps me active. You know, that's four fights in eight months. That's exactly what I want right now. You know, I'm a young veteran in this game. You know, but I haven't took any damage. You know, so it's a perfect opportunity for me to be active and to prove myself as one of the best in the world. So, a lot of factors, but it was a very, very, very easy decision in the end up. And obviously, making your debut in Dublin through the arena. You and Dan were talking about it. I think the world knows just how special Dublin is when it comes to fight night events. Can you kind of talk about what it means to debut with the company in Dublin? Yeah, it means a lot, you know, especially with, you know, signing with PFL, of course, their US-based organization. The season is, of course, in the US on ESPN. So to have the opportunity before I enter that to fight at home in front of my on home soil in front of my people. It's an unbelievable opportunity, you know, and it also gives me a it gives me a great chance to show the PFL what I bring to the table, the PFL and Bellator, may I say. Like I bring a crowd, you know, and I bring an atmosphere and I bring an energy to my fights. And that's why I've I've created the hype that I have. Of course, my performance is my skill level is world class, but I do bring a different energy to my fights. And I'm just very excited that I'm gonna have the opportunity to show that to to the PFL and Bellator. I can't wait to see you in Dublin. Bobby, one for you. I know you're excited for this opportunity, excited for this fight. Uh, what does it mean to you to have the opportunity to go into enemy territory, one of the best, you know, fight places in the world, take on, you know, homegrown guy and uh, welcome him to, to Bellator? Uh, it's a great opportunity, man. I'm honored, you know, can't, uh, I'm just excited to be there, you know, to fight in three arena and against one of the top prospects in the world right now. Like, I'm excited, man. Stoked to be here and just honored. Thank you guys very much. 
Marty, King's Court. Hey, my first question is to Paul. Uh, Paul, obviously you've had you've had such a great career already, and you're still only young and still only very early on in your career. Um, obviously 2017 was was a hard year for yourself with those injuries. Um, really wanted to ask what was that mental resolve to for you to stay focused and stay committed to your dream of becoming world champion in MMA? Look, to be honest, the only thing that got me through that was just the deep core belief. And this was this was before anybody kind of thought this guy can make something himself. I had that deep core, like almost delusional belief at the time that I can make something myself in this game and in this life. And I truly, truly, truly believed that I had the potential to be a world champion. And that is what drove me through the, the injury process. And you know what? It just it was the obstacles that I had to overcome at the time. And you know, I and I came back and became a world champion. So it's you know, it's it's been a good run so far, but as I say, a young veteran in this game, but I do feel like I'm only starting at the same time. And with signing now to the PFL and Bellator, it's a new lease of life. You know, I've got this new energy, this new invigoration of energy throughout my training camp. I'm out in South Florida here at the minute, like putting the work in. And it's it's awesome. It's very, very exciting. As I said, obviously, you're dangerous everywhere. You've got KO finishes. You've got submission finishes. We've obviously mentioned about you being back in the three arena in Dublin, and we know how special that is. Um, we've seen the effect that Cedric Dumbe has had in Paris for, for PFL and for Bellator. Are we going to see a similar effect in the three arena for Dublin in the, the Paul Hughes effect? 100%. That's what I'm going to bring to the table. And as I say, I'm going to prove my worth. I'm going to prove, I'm going to, going to back up exactly what I've been saying about myself. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Nice. Right, so my last one to yourself is that I see an Inter Miami shirt there. Are you Team Messi or Team Ronaldo? Team Messi, come on, man. Got to represent the, the South Florida culture, you know, while I'm here. May, may embrace myself into it. <laughs> oh, that's Paul. Uh, and then my last question, obviously, to Bobby. Um, Bobby, obviously, there's going to be a, there's a lot of hype on Paul, uh, obviously, coming into his his debut with with Bellator. You've been a Bellator staple for, for many years now. You've got the experience. Um what is the motivation and how is that going to feel for you to uh, really to stop the party? It's just what I do. It is what it is. We're going to go out there and fight and then we'll figure it out. All the best to both of you. Andrew Benjamin. Hey, Paul. Uh, my question is for you. I'm curious to know, uh, do you get more nervous or do you get more excited when you're fighting uh in front of your hometown family friends uh that sort of crowd i guess it's just a mixture of both you know um i would say yeah it's it's a mixture of both you know I, i'm not the i'm not one of these guys that comes out and say oh I, I don't feel pressure i don't feel nerves like i absolutely do and i like that i like that feeling because it drives me on it keeps me switched on in training it keeps me in that optimal zone of improvement where I need to be to be the best in the world. So there's nervousness, but there is, a, there's so much excitement, especially with now this is a new chapter of my career. Like, as I talked about, like this new lease of life that I have now. So it's, there's a lot of excitement um, with fighting at home. Of course there is added pressure, but I'm no stranger to fighting at home. I'm no stranger to big nights in MMA and the bigger the night, the better I've performed. And that's just how it is. So I'm very, very much looking forward to it. And as I say, to back up my words, to to prove, you know, that I am the fighter that I say I am. Gotcha. Bobby, a uh, question for you. It's been over a year since we've seen you fight. I'm curious to know, what were you doing during that layoff, layoff period? Uh, it's a lot happened in my life in the last year. And, uh, you know, I've just been continuing training and uh, hanging out with family and just, grounding myself gotcha i'm just curious to know uh do you uh do you at all believe in cage rust ring rust uh combat rust whatever you want to call it do you think that's ever a factor for any fighters um after a long way off yeah i believe so but i've been in the situation before and uh i'll perform when i have to oh for the previous times where that has uh where you have uh taking uh time off uh what is it like to get back in the cage is it all is it must do you get like a muscle memory where you just kind of like oh it's like oh you never left or do you have to kind of i guess switch 
the switch in your mind that you're just in this environment now and now you got to perform the, the way you got to perform yeah once that door closes it's it's back to normal we're just i'm just at home you know what i mean we've done this a long time and we've been here before and it is what it is gotcha thank you very much gentlemen donna corby hey uh bobby i wanted to ask i i have to imagine the way that you're being talked about must irk you a little bit the, the way that people kind of dismiss you as as this guy who who is there to sort of just be a, a, another name on on Paul's record that has to uh that has to, to wind you up a little bit no I actually don't even pay attention to it I've never heard that until now so yeah not, not a big deal to me you don't you don't keep up with like the the talk on social media and all the hype around Paul's name no not at all man and uh, and for Paul, I suppose coming back, obviously you you just had a big fight in in Dublin on your your last one. Obviously, this is the the three arena. Can you talk to us a bit about the the kind of the significance of of that venue? You've been there, uh, obviously for a lot of teammates and all that, but but this is a, a very different kind of a a moment for you. Can you talk to us a bit about the significance of fighting in the three arena? Yeah, it's gonna be a big moment for me. You know, the three arena is it's so iconic and what Bellator have done in three arena has also been iconic so to have the opportunity to co-headline that is is awesome it's a it's an it's a nice uh it's a nice little add-on to my career to what I've achieved so far and to, as I say to do that at home is very very important for me to have my debut for the PFL and Bellator in front of my home people it, it's amazing but I, I would also just like to touch on on what you're asking Bobby there because mm -hmm. I've seen I've also seen this and I couldn't disagree with it more I think people aren't doing their due due diligence and watching Bobby's fights. I mean, I, the more that I've studied his game, the more I've thought, do you know what? I'm in for a fucking hard night, you know? So I'm absolutely not taking him lightly in the slightest as I, I never do that. But I just wanted to touch on that because because you brought it up there, but I just wanted to put that out there. Of course. And, and I would concur with that, that I think people uh, have, have kind of taken this fight a little bit uh, lightly. I, I wanted to ask as well, uh, maybe Paul and maybe Dan as well. Have you made up with Race Efo after uh, after what happened uh, <laughs> ahead of the announcement? We're cool. We're cool. I don't know about that. Dan, I'm sure is cool as well. I think I don't know if he's still on the call. I'm 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 always good friends with Race Efo, but we we like to disagree and debate things out at full volume. If if people saw us debating in public, they would think we were arguing. But no, he's a he's he's like a. He's he's an elder statesman in in the sport in combat sports, and every single person's got huge respect for Ray Seffer. Have you forgiven him for for leaking the news? <laughs> Look, he was excited like the rest of us. You know what I mean? Like this is a it's 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 an exciting move for for PFL and Bellator to to bring Paul Hughes on board. Um, you know, and and this is really where we get to see where his levels at. You know, he's he's on home soil. There's a lot of pressure. This this arena holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts, especially in Irish mixed martial arts, because of how many great nights there have been there. So, like, I know the pressures on Paul Hughes's shoulders, especially you know to kind of validate his decision to come over to PFL and Bellator. And you know, in in Bobby King, he's got a very tough individual that can fight in any single range of the fight. You know, and and there's no pressure. Like I, I always like to be the person going into enemy territory because like I, my back's against the wall, and that's when I'm my, my most dangerous. And when you've got someone that's got the experience and the you know the the, the game that that uh, Bobby's got, it just makes for a, a really really interesting fight and a real a real level test for where Paul Hughes is at right now in a in a high pressure situation. Thanks, guys. Harry Davies. All right, uh, pinging it to JL Curvin. Thanks, Gabby. Uh, first question is for Paul. Um, you had mentioned earlier that you feel like you're a young vet because obviously you've you know experienced high levels in your career, but you have so much more to do. Going into this next phase of your career with the PFL, Bellator, what are some of the goals that you have and what are some of the things you want to see yourself accomplish over the next few years? I think it's pretty simple. Three more fights, three more wins this year, enter the 2025 million dollar tournament. 
have the perfect season, finish everybody I fight, win a million dollars, repeat that again. That's what I foresee. Nice. And then for Bobby, um, going into this fight, looking at your record, you've won fights in numerous ways, arm bars, TKOs. Um, for a guy like Paul, when you go approach this fight, is it more so skill set versus skill set or – do you feel like you're con sort of concocting a game plan to take out somebody as talented as him? I mean, there's always a game plan, but you can never plan ahead, right? So it is what it is. We'll just go out there, we fight, and we'll figure it out. Unsolve the puzzle. He's a tough right. dude, talented, and we're just going to go figure it out as we fight. Great. That's all I had. Appreciate it. Carlito, fight talk. Yes. Carlito Fight Talk here. Um, thank you all for having me again. And my first question is for Paul. And um, I see that proper 12 right behind you. You know, uh, how often do you usually, uh, you know, take in the beverage with that? I was actually, the video that came out with Conor McGregor last week, I was actually with him partying. Oh, no kidding. You know, oh, joking. Of course. <laughs> I'm actually in Killcliffe in South Florida here and Proper 12 is one of the sponsors of the gym. So we've just set up this area and it just just so happened to be behind me. But um, yeah, absolutely. N no indulging in any of that, you know, professional. Exactly, exactly. But if you had to and you're off of training camp, would you pick uh, Jameson or Proper 12? It would have to be Proper 12, of course. Excellent, excellent. So talk about training camp, you know, break it down for us. Look, as I said, I'm, I'm out here in South Florida, Kilcliffe FC, you know, one of the most renowned gyms in the world, mixing it up with the absolute best on the planet every single day, you know, and honestly, just getting pushed to the limits. It's exactly what I need. You know, I, I train, of course, in Belfast in Northern Ireland. That's where my home team is, Fight Academy. But I do like to come out and switch my training up here with some, as I say, some of the best bodies in, in the planet and some of the best coaches in the planet. So really getting the best of both worlds right now. You know, I'm in that optimal zone of training to to be the best on the planet and i'm i'm giving everything to this game you know so camp's going well um it's three weeks away you know i just honestly the excitement's starting to kick in at this point you know to to get in there in the three arena make my debut like blow the roof off the place and to show my skills it's very exciting thanks i think and i think you pretty much answered my last question i was going to ask you you know what can we all expect in dublin june 22nd <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. And uh, for you, Bobby, um, break down training camp and uh, how are you feeling about your preparation? Yeah, man, I'm so super excited as well. You know, I'm like train out here in Utah half the week and then I train out in Colorado as well with Dwayne Ludwig and the rest of the team out there. So I'll be prepared and uh, excited to fight in the three, three arena. Thanks. And um, to fighting, you know, making it from Utah to Dublin, you know, what can we all expect under the lights? You can expect a hard technical fight. Man, I look forward to seeing it, and uh, thank you all for sure. Harry Davies. Hey, Bobby, I was going to ask about training in, in Utah and Colorado, two places with notoriously high elevation. Do you find that when you come to places like Dublin where it's at sea level, you find a real big difference in the training room versus the fight nights? Oh, yeah, huge difference for sure, man. I, I'm originally from Hawaii, so anytime I go home and I train out there, I can run for days, train for days, like nothing. So, yeah, definitely feel the difference. Mm. Going back to those Hawaii fights, looking at your record, you, you're on the regional circuit there way back in the, the 2008 times, and now we're 15 years on, and you're still doing it. Do you set a timeline of when you want to stop fighting, or is it really just dependent on how your body feels? Yeah, just depending on how my body feels. You know, every every year so far, I've always said I got two more years in me and I'm still at that same mindset, so. And just one for you, Paul. You mentioned there the difference between Fight Academy and Killcliffe, how you switch between the two. What are the main differences you find from when you go home to when you go over to South Florida other than uh, the heat, I'm guessing? <laughs> the heat's definitely a big factor. It's nice to get out in the sun every day. But, uh, you know, the main difference is here in Killcliffe, we've got every single look that you could possibly need you know if i'm fighting a southpaw wrestler i've got that if i'm fighting a guy from dagestan that just wrestles i've got that if i'm fighting an elite kickboxer i've got that you know so i have a lot more training bodies here in kilcliffe at home 
have a little bit less bodies, but the quality is also amazing. And I've got, of course, my team there that have been with me for a long, long time. So when you've got a team that knows you inside out for a long time, these small percentile differences are very, very important when it comes to this high level. So I've really got the best of both worlds. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Last question, ping it to Dan Hardy. Thank you very much, Gabby. So I've just got one question for each of you, and then uh, and then we'll get this wrapped up. Uh, thank you, thank you both very much for your time. First of all, so to Bobby, um, talk to me a bit about your your journey in mixed martial arts. You said you've been training with Dwayne Ludwig, who's obviously a you know a standout coach. Uh, talk, talk to me about a few of the other people around you, like ex inspiring coaches, people that have added a lot to your game over the years. Yeah, like I said, I trained with since Dwayne Ludwig out in Colorado, and along with them is like. Uh... Juan Rocheletta, TG Dillashaw, uh, Trevor Peak, who's right now out there training as well, and uh, a bunch of the local guys that fight out of elevation. And um, so, yeah, man, they've been putting me through the through the ringer, and I'm excited for the fight. Nice. Uh, and so, Paul, just you know, talk to me about this this next step in your career. Does it feel like a step? Does does it does it feel in any way more daunting than any other? Uh, uh, fight of your career so far given the fact that it feels to me like there's more pressure layered on this for you yeah there absolutely is more pressure you know with obviously everything being new it's very different the three arena being added into that and then also on top of that being the Comey event on such a prestigious promotion with such a long history and of doing cards in Dublin you know so it's absolutely added pressure and it feels like a step up for sure I know I did. I have had big nights in my career, but this is the next chapter, and this next chapter is going to be the biggest one yet. So it's very exciting times. Well, thank you so much to both of you. Um, that concludes today's Bellator Champion Series Global Media Call. Uh, thank you again for everybody that attended and joined us today. Uh, tickets for the Bellator Champion Series event in Dublin on June twenty second are available on Ticketmaster. The card will be streamed live on Max in the US, DAZN in the UK, and Virgin Media Television in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, this is going to be a really, really special event. Main and co-main, both really exciting fights. Best of luck to both of you in the rest of your training camp and in your travels to Dublin. Uh, thank you to everybody on the call, and uh, we will see you very soon.